Um, welcome to our first project. Um, uh, yeah. Welcome to the RPS project. I'm Richard, and today I'm going to be having a look at the Baxendale filter, also called the Baxendale tone control filter, which is uh, a very simple device um, developed by, well, invented by a guy called Peter Baxendale, um, who was a British electronics engineer working quite heavily in the uh, audio part of electronics. He um, pioneered the use of analog electronics in audio. You know, he was born in 1921, uh, very smart guy, and um, yeah, went on to do quite a lot of stuff in the uh, analog audio world. But the Baxendale filter, or Baxendale tone control filter, is one of the main things that um, most people will associate with him because uh, it's got his name all over it. So, what is it? Well, it's a very basic filter like that. Now, uh, uh, yeah, I've missed a few bits on. I've missed, forgotten to put the earth sign on down here. It connects to ground at this point, and you've got input, output. Um, but it's it's very simple. You've effectively got um, three resistors, two variable resistors, and four capacitors, and it does what it should do in the way of um, controlling. The tone in a bass and a treble. You have a bass part and a treble part, and it helps either boost it or cut the uh, treble or boost. Very very simple, nice and easy going. I quite enjoyed actually looking at it. I've got it here on the breadboard, so um, I think we're going to get on and have a look at that. Also going to have a look at I think the considered operation of it. Um, so I've got some. Um, some manual CAD drawings here that I've uh, put together. So I'll have a look at that and uh, see if we can understand what this thing's doing. Okay, so here we have it on the breadboard. A uh, couple of pots, resistors, some capacitors. I'm using 100K pots here. This one is the base and this one is the treble. Um, I've got 100K in parallel because I wanted some 50K pots but I didn't have any. So that works for me. Um, three resistors and um, some capacitors in there to make the circuit. I've got another resistor on the output stage there and this is my input. Now I do have a couple of other things in here. This is a um, couple of amplifier circuits, class A amplifiers. This is a common collector and then we've got a common emitter um, just to help the circuit really but I, I'm not looking at the signal through them I'm looking at it after it's come through them and before it goes through the the output um, stage they're just there I think to help keep it a bit more stable or well that's the circuit I was looking working from or looking at when I decided to put this together so um, that's what I decided to uh, to set up on here but the, the what I'm actually looking at is just this filter bit here so uh, well let's um, turn it on just pan up a minute so you can see the scope, because that's where we want to look. There we go. So if I uh, turn on the circuit first. There we go. And then turn on the signal generator. And there you have it. See, we've got an input, signal 1, and an output, signal 2. Let's just have a look at the... Um, at the, oh, I've already got it set up. Yeah, 500 millivolts. What I'm putting in is what I'm seeing on the scope. What's going into the filter, but obviously what's coming out is something different because at the moment we're on 50 hertz, so we're on low voltage. I mean, sorry, low frequency. This is low voltage, half a volt, but it is coming into the filter. But I suppose. First of all, I ought to get and have a look at the uh, at the circuit. Um, have a look at the um, manual CAD uh, drawings and um, see if I can understand what it's doing before I start messing about with it and uh, trying to confirm what I think it's doing. So let's have a look at that. So here we have the uh, Baxendale filter. The um, well, my representation of it. It. Uh, I suppose it isn't the best of drawings 
I've forgotten to put ground on it and this is the input and this is the output. I suppose the other thing I'm going to need is um, something to mark out the flow on it. Let me uh, get another pen and all sorts of stuff you end up with in your pencil case, don't you? you end up with wow, look at that. I've um, collected quite a few things in my pencil case over the time. Oh, that's nice. Bliss Hill Open Air Museum, the uh, inclined plane, if anybody's ever been there. It's, um, Bliss Hill Open Air Museum. Took a photo of that while I was there. Made it into a little bookmark type thing. What am I looking for anyway? Oh yeah. Something like a, a highlighter or a gel pen. There we go, that'll do. Hopefully we'll be able to use that. That way, that way, and there. Compass. Bookmark, nice. Now I've done that. We can actually get on with it. So the basics of the of it is is that this pot being the um, yeah right it just here base side and this over here being the treble. Um, nice and simple. This pot will cut or boost the base side on the base frequencies and this side will um, cut or boost the uh, treble or the higher frequencies, sort of mid to high frequencies. So what we tend to have is that, let's say I put these pots, this is the, uh, um, the boost side and I have them turned all the way up so that I'm getting boost on both frequencies. So what tends to happen is that we'll get a signal will come in here and it will go through this side. Now because this is turned all the way up, the easiest path to do is to come through here and then we'll go, well go two ways. One you'll have it going through this capacitor and then through this resistor to, uh, to the ground. But you'll also get the signal coming through this resistor to the output. Now the other thing about that is the other part of the signal that is going to be going through the other side. Get my notes on this. Try to get it, tell it right, and I um, is that it's going to come through this side through this capacitor and then to the output. Now, depending on what frequency you're at, depends on how much of it's gonna go through this side uh, and this resistor and this capacitor form a low pass filter. So only the lower stuff's gonna come through. And all the higher stuff, as you take the frequency up, the higher frequencies are going to come through here because at low frequencies with these treble turned all the way up it's this capacitor, the reactance capacitance sorry, let me say that again the reactive capacitance of this capacitor will determine how much signal gets through so I'm using a 4.7 nanofarad uh, capacitor there which means at 50 hertz this thing has a resistance value, effective resistance value of 678 K ohm, 678,000 ohms. Whereas at 50 kilohertz, it only looks like 677 ohms. So at the higher frequencies, it's going to let a lot more through 
through this part of the circuit and this part basically at that point plays effectively no part in the um, in the process because the frequencies are so high so let me just move this on and we'll have a look at pots in a different position so uh, base treble input output should have done this before and shouldn't I never mind it's what you get from uh, manual CAD if I now was to turn both pots down to cut which is turned all the way down then the signal is going to come through a bit differently we're going to come in this way through this resistor but now it's going to come through this capacitor and then when it gets to here it's going to come down this way through this resistor to ground but you're also going to get some of it going through this resistor to the output now when you've got it in this scenario you end up with this resistor sorry this capacitor and this resistor forming a uh, high pass filter so that is a high pass filter which as we know allows all higher frequencies through which is coming here but at the same time because it's cutting what you also have here is some of that signal that comes this way it's going to come along here and then pass through this capacitor to ground so we're cutting out so when this is at low frequencies it will go through this way and cut out the higher frequency cut out the frequencies at that uh, when you're at the lower end so you cut out the low frequencies because a high pass filter just let through the high stuff and the low stuff will just get sent to ground but at higher frequencies it'll come through here and because this is turned all the way down it'll just cut them out it'll just send it down to ground and it, depending on the capacitor you've got there it depends on how much you're going to end up cutting it now I think I've got a 33 nanofarad in here but I mean a lot of them will have like 100, 10, 10 and then 5, uh, 5 or 4.7 or maybe even a 1 nanofarad in there so it just depends on what capacitors you've got in there so when it's when it's all on boost you get that so you get as much of the signal coming out whether you've got the frequency low like 50 hertz or you've got the frequency high let's say 20 kilohertz um, it's all, all going to come out so it's going to get as much as you can but when you turn the pots down you're going to get you're going to cut out a lot of the signal so when it's down on the base side 50 hertz you're going to lose most of it and on the treble side when it's like 20 kilohertz you're going to be cutting out most of that signal you're going to lose most of it now I suppose I should have a look at it with the uh, with the pots in the uh, in a halfway position or one turned up one turned down so yeah let's do that um, let's get the um, rest of the parts in there so we've got base input output treble and if I have the base side on boost but the treble on cut then at low frequencies what you'll see is it will come in here this way like it did when they were both um, being boosted and the signal will go through that capacitor to the output so that and that form a low pass filter allowing all the low stuff through and it will go to, to the output but the high frequencies when it when you turn this up to the higher frequencies when this is on cut what happens is it just takes that signal and will dump it down to ground so you'll lose the frequencies but obviously the, the, the issue being here is that um, this is sort of just a, a a rework of the other two you know one up one down whereas really 
it all comes down to what frequency you're talking about 50 hertz or you know 20 hertz which is the lower audio to 20 kilohertz if you've got it in that setup and you'll find that it's the midpoint that's important the mid ranges and the same goes really for if you do it the other way um, bass input output treble if you do it this way that's cut that's boost then really it's just a case of this comes in this way we'll then go through here to the output uh, to the to the ground and then also to output but at the same time if you have a high frequency it's going to come through this way and you get all that frequency coming out and it just depends on this is going to be more effective in what finding that midpoint is but really it's just another rework of the first two so I suppose the important ones are these where you have it either whether it's at the cut point either way or at the boost um, because it depends upon the frequency that you're going to put in there so I suppose what I ought to do is uh, have a look at it and get it and turn it on again and uh, start doing some measurements and uh, see what this thing's given me